What's going on guys? My name is Hussein and we're using OBS for the first time. Let me know how it works. Uh, thank you so much everyone who suggested that, to use this tool. <laughs> I didn't know it exists. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very bad when it comes to these things. Such a noob when it comes to recording and all that stuff. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It was really simple. Just I, you can see me, but I cannot see myself here in this picture, so it doesn't really cover my screen, which is awesome. This is exactly what I want. But yeah, I want to talk about WhatsApp today and, and, and an article from September 23rd, 2011. And yeah, it's an old article, but it, uh, I want to I wanna link it to what, what WhatsApp is doing today and, and um, how it doesn't matter for us uh, back at engineers. So how about we discuss that? So WhatsApp, guys, is a chatting <laughs> what's up guys <laughs> get it uh, uh it is a chatting application that is is predominantly used in mainly the middle east and and, and india and, and this area is like not far east the far east uses something else uh, they the, that we chat especially in the and uh when it comes to china but i don't know if if uh all the east is the far east uses it or not but definitely in the middle east every parent every single person have whatsapp uses whatsapp it's basically it's a it's a it's a de facto communication between uh iphones and android and everyone who has a phone basically that's the communication right so whatsapp you use this to chat you send messages text all that stuff but if you think about it from a technical perspective how does that work well we built a chatting application we built a multiplayer game application all of these are stateful protocols uh, that uses a bi-directional uh, ways of communication whether that's raw tcp whether that's web socket whether that's grpc whether any any protocol you pick whatsapp have been built a long time ago so they don't disclose this correct me guys if they do i didn't see anything from their documentation of what protocol they are using my personal belief i think they are using raw tcp and they they are squeezing as much performance as possible they had their own headers obviously on the top of tcp in order to maintain this connection and uh, what they did here is that blog in 2011 they managed to get to a 1 million tcp connections i'm assuming tcp here obviously it had to be a connection right because udb don't have connections so yeah 1 million tcp connections per server they're using the the good old beautiful uh nothing fancy here nothing fancy here is using the good old just server architecture and client server architecture very very simple design and this is their actually their uh when i saw this their, their talk and then I think in 2016, they talk about how, how simplicity rules every single engineering decision, right? And that's, and that's very, very powerful concept because you need to, to stay simple when you design stuff. Introducing so many uh, three-party stuff and, our, and, and components can actually complicate your application. We're seeing what happens with microservices. The, the whole industry is going into into a frenzy to be honest every single component like we're just inventing new components maybe I'm, I'm i'll be wrong but but i think it's just a little bit getting a little bit too much but yeah just look at the pure beauty here they okay they managed to get to 1 million tcp connection and no more than a year later they said Forget about it. 1 million is so 2011. In 20, 2012, they reached 2 million, 2.2 million open sockets per server. So that's that's really powerful stuff, guys. So they are, obviously those servers are beefy servers, but they, they must have taken every single... Uh, efficiency mechanism or, or performance that can squeeze to minimize the the memory footprint of those tcp connections so and uh, i want to discuss this in general and how they are doing it and i'm not claiming i know i i honestly don't know how they are achieving this right 
from the the actually it's it's actually it's good it, this screenshot gives us some information not much right but but it does give us some they this particular thing has like 35 gigs of memory back in 2012 <laughs> right so 35 gig per server 27 free right and and uh, i don't know if this is like the total memory or this is plus this i'm, I'm not sure here but it's it's very interesting to 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 see these numbers they're managed to get 2 million tcp per server so obviously this is a stateful protocol and if you think about it when you connect from the client whatsapp client to the server they force you to always stay connected there is no sign in button or oh sign out you don't get a choice you have the app that app's is running all the time and, and that there is a socket between you and the server that is always communicating and they're they're i'm, I'm pretty much they they take advantage of everything in that single socket between you and the server and uh, from that talk that i'm going to reference below they actually managed that that's in 2016 the talk they I didn't announce it in the blog they got three million tcp connection so three million per server and obviously the more ser server memory you get the more sockets you can handle this obviously but there's also uh, but there's only it's not really uh proportional though right because the more tcp connections the more work the cpu has to handle so the more you need more cpu cores to deal with these tcp connections right? especially if, if a message comes and you have to wake up that tcp connection you have to cpu and then go and, and do something with them and here's another thing i don't know and if, guys feel free to jump in and, and correct me or, and let's have discussion in, in the, in the, in, with regard to this thing here's what i don't know i'm not sure if they are running a single process that has that listens on a single port on that machine right so a single process on a single port hosting three million sockets or not it's not clear from this right i'll be <clears throat> i'll be really surprised if they do that but they might they might they might actually do that or maybe they are spinning up multiple because if, if that process dies man I, I i don't know how what they're gonna do to 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 respin up three million connection that takes time right three three-way handshake and all that stuff i mean they're keeping those connections alive so i'm not sure if it's a one single process that hosting all that so the other uh, and I wish they talk in, in detail about this stuff, man. I just want to have a conversation with the CEO or, or, or the C, uh, CTO, to be honest, with the WhatsApp uh, group and what what they are doing. It's like, it's, and the, the other way I can think of is like they are spinning up multiple processes uh, running on multiple ports on the same server and, and the load balancer, probably it's a layer four load balancer. Otherwise, they that's gonna uh, so probably not just a layer four i would imagine it's it's a nat uh proxy where will just it will just blindly just like your router gateway works it will just blindly forward the traffic to the server because if it's a layer four or layer seven reverse proxy dude that's just that's just uh, a lot of tcp connection because uh, I don't know if you can see me. I think you can, but it, it is the reverse proxy. If you can terminate the connection, not not necessarily the TLS, you have to establish a connection between yourself as a client and the reverse proxy, and then another one. Did you call it <laughs> another one, between the reverse proxy and the back end? And that 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 you the reverse proxy will immediately that that just adds another layer of of things to have worry about right just this this stuff obviously they should have a, a load balancer and that load balancer is in front of all those servers 
right? Because when you connect from a client, you don't, you are not aware of these servers. I might be wrong. Maybe they, to avoid, let's, let's go back a little bit. If there, there are two ways to do this, right? If you in the client, the WhatsApp client, you set the WhatsApp domain address to whatever, whatsapp.com, api.whatsapp.com, then there is one IP address that everybody's go, go to. That's not true if you have like multiple DNS entries, right? So, so you can load balance at the DNS level. But that will eventually give you to one server, two server, or three servers. These are your load balancers. The load balancer will look at the traffic who says, okay, you're from Asia. Let me take you to a server in Asia. You're from America. Let me take you to a server from America. But from from the talk, I think all, all their servers, most of their servers are actually in, in, in the US, So, which, which surprised me actually. So now the connection between the client and the reverse proxy has to to be maintained in the front end and also in the back end, right? Between the reverse proxy and the, the WhatsApp servers. Now they don't mention what these servers actually represent. Are these the load balancers or are these the back end servers? That's why I have so many questions <laughs> discussing this stuff. And uh, yeah, so that's that's one thing I can think of, right? The, the reverse proxy can stop pooling connections and share the TCP connection at the back end. That might lead to security issues if you think about it. Uh, if you manage to write a WhatsApp client can that can uh, that's how HTTP smuggling attacks happen, by the way, if you with pooling, right? It's just like multiple clients coming into one reverse proxy, but their requests are shoved into one pipe at the back end. And, and that's generally, if you think about it, it's good saving memory on the back end, right? Because you have fewer TCP connections on the back end, but now the load balancer dealing with all that stuff. So that's one architecture you can build. I think it's I think it's 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 difficult to build that, right? Especially because you have to write your own reverse proxy. There is no reverse proxy that gives you this feature, especially, especially with your custom uh, protocol that WhatsApp have, right? With what? With even with WebSockets, I don't believe any web. What? Uh, in, uh, I don't believe any proxy supports WebSockets <clears throat> at the back end, on top of like let's say HTTP2, right? Because uh, that's an RFC that people are still working on, right? And, and that's a different, that, that will be awesome, right? If we can do that, where we have a single TCP connection in the back end on the top of HTTP, but each thread, this, each stream of that, that TCP connection is dedicated for a WebSocket connection. I'm talking about different things, but that RFC will allow us to kind of take benefit of that TCP connection. Obviously that TCP meltdown will come bite us in the ass later, but that's why we need, we, we need it quick later. But yeah, that's one solution. Another solution that is actually, I like a lot. I think Netflix, from what I read way before, used to do that, is they put the load balancing on, on the client side. They said, hey client, you pick. <laughs> Connect to us as a DNS and, and we're gonna give you one server. And when you connect to the server, the server returns a bunch of IP addresses to all the servers. And hey server, you can pick, just like well, how Discord and all these gaming server works. Hey, you wanna connect to the server in the east, server in the west, you pick. And if you, if you let the client choose, the client can be easily uh, configured to choose which server, and even you can let let the user pick if you want to, right? Say, hey, all oh, the servers down, pick this. Obviously, this this stuff is all hidden now from us. But if you can pick a server, 
Now you put the load balancing on the client side. And if the clients are, are well balanced and well written, then that's not a big deal. But that will avoid the need of a, of a back end load balancer, right? So that's just one less thing uh, you, you need to worry about when it comes to back end uh, system design. And I, I don't know which one is the better one. I think each approach have pros and cons. Definitely the second one, you don't have to worry about a load balancer or a reverse proxy that uh, maintains like these two sides, the front and the back end, that's tough, man. And 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 uh, yeah, that's kind of, that can lead into a lot of uh, configuration hell, I believe. But yeah, guys, I think that's uh, that's all what I want to discuss today. WhatsApp reaching 3 million, 2060. I'm pretty sure they reached now 4 million connections per, t per server. And, and, and I wish, I just wish that someone from the WhatsApp team can help us and then answer these, all these unanswered questions. And maybe they are answered somewhere in the web. Who knows, guys? I searched, but I couldn't find anything when it comes to WhatsApp engineering. Uh, the only thing I find related to engineering are these two blogs. That's a few other stuff. All right, guys. Um, that's it for me today. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.